Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another cool pinball repair video for you this evening. We had a customer get in touch with us and say that he had an old pinball machine that he was having some issues with and he wanted us to check it out. And he brought it all the way from the beach up here to drop it off for a little while with us so we could work our way through it and get it more reliable for him. So this is Bally's 1971 4 million BC pinball machine. This is a really cool game with some really cool features, including kind of rare for an EM pinball machine, multi-ball. That's right. At some point, they figured out how to make more than one ball on even the old EMs. There's only about a dozen EM games that were production or, you know, flipper games that were released that have uh, multi-ball in them. And this is one of the better ones. So there's also some other cool play field features that we're going to check out. So the story was the gentleman's father has had it for a long time. I believe it was his father. And uh, he's had a couple gentlemen uh, check it out and work on or look at it, look at it. The thing plays pretty much, but it has a few issues. And the uh, he had one gentleman come out to his house, and uh, the uh, uh, he didn't he didn't know anything about EMs, so he just wasn't into that. So he just misunderstood. He thought it was a, a newer one. And then another gentleman came out, and he worked on it and got it running again. But the, the, uh, the problem was it's, it's kind of hard. If you, know, if you don't know, it's kind of hard to work on an electromechanical machine in somebody's house just because there's a lot of stuff. I mean, you really need to go all the way through it to get it reliable and clean all of the relays and all of the switches. And it's hard to do something like that at somebody's house. That's why we only work on them here in our shop. We just don't have the manpower to do that. and It's easier if we do them at our shop just because we can do it whenever we get time. Um, work on it an hour or two a day and get the thing knocked out. So he kept having a reoccurring problem. Um, and uh, so uh, he eventually he said, look, I'm just going to bring it up to you. So he drove it all the way from the beach up here and dropped it off with us. And we're, we've been taking care of it for a few weeks now, and we are about to fix it for him once and for all. Hopefully it'll be reliable after this. Knock on wood. So the thing, at first glance, is in really nice shape. Now the red on it is not original. Originally it was all green. Um, it has a uh, 4 million BC, the dinosaurs are killing each other theme to it. Awesome theme, uh, but the red has been added. But whoever did it, they did a really cool job. I don't know who did it, but it's awesome. It looks original. If I didn't tell you and you didn't, you'd never seen it, you might not know that that was added. So they painted it red, and then they put the splatter paint on it that we're always talking about. And from from what I understand, it was always like that. Like he didn't do it, and he said his father didn't do it. So I think they bought it from someone. Uh, maybe the operator had done that. And I can't tell why the operator did that. I don't see any obvious damage or any reason that you would do that. But for whatever reason, they did it. I'm going to show you something else that's interesting. Now, you know, I'm an American. <laughs> I'm a country boy. But I think that says half Frank. And I think that says one franc. And I'm just going to guess that francs are French money. I might have that wrong. If I do, I apologize to all of our French, French, Frenchmen out there and French women. So why does this thing take French coins? It's because it, at one point was in France. That's the only reason it would take French coins. So at one point, this game was overseas. They call these re-imports. Collectors hate re-imports. Personally, I have no problem at all with re-imports, but collectors hate them because the, they have a bad reputation of being really in bad condition. Now, I think that reputation is undeserved. Now, so the reason that people don't like re-imports, the theory is, is that uh, since they're operated in Europe and nothing against Europe, but since they're operated in Europe, they're a long way away from Chicago where they were built. And so often if something breaks, the operator, remember this is 1971, the operator wouldn't have the correct part to repair it. 
and wouldn't be able to get one easily because they're all sitting in a box in Chicago. And so the operator would hack something up and just make it work. And so over the years, some of these re-imported games have had some horrible stuff done to them. I mean, they'll have just, you won't believe, horror story level stuff. You wouldn't believe some of the stuff that, that they've done to these games if it's a re-import. But, to be fair, the operators here in the United States did the same damn thing. So I don't think it's a... I don't think it has anything to do with it was re-imported. I think, I think that just some games, they don't get fixed right. This particular one is in great shape. I, I don't see any kind of hacks or anything on it. Maybe we'll find some stuff when we go in it. But the thing looks very clean, very nice condition. It's been taken care of very well. Some people might not like that they added the red. But to me personally, I love it. I think it looks great. So... Uh, I don't think it being a re-import has any kind of bearing at all on the quality of it. The issue that he said that it that he keeps having is that the 10 point relay locks on. Or the 10 point score reel. So it could be something simple. He had somebody check it out that knows their stuff and is good at it. But again, the guy was at his house and couldn't stay there or even come back. The guy drove a couple hours just to get to his house. So it was a thing where... Sometimes on, on problems, you can fix it, but then you need to let it sit while you play it and you know check it out in a couple days and see if it's still doing it, make sure everything's cool. Um, so I don't want it to come across that I'm like... Uh, I hate whenever people look for reasons to blame previous repair people for stuff. Oh, the guy was supposed to fix it. He ripped them off. I don't, I don't feel that way at all, and I hate whenever people do that. The guy drove a couple hours to his house. From what the he mentioned, the gentleman I know who he's talking about. The guy is really good at what he does, so he didn't. He did the best job he could at someone's house with limited time, and had the thing up and running. But then a, a, this problem, I believe, developed after the guy left, and he couldn't really. It's hard to talk to somebody over the phone and tell them, "Oh yeah, that's just this. Check this switch." It just. I wish I had the talent to do that to tell people, "Oh yeah, just check this switch," but. I don't. Um, a lot of times people will uh, email us and we'll try to help them out the best we can through email. So if you have any questions on yours, if you email us, uh, sometimes we can help you figure it out. This game also has zipper flippers. So if you don't know what zipper flippers are, a lot of people complain about these little two-inch stunners here. That's what I call them. Same thing. I don't, I don't, I don't complain about them. That's how the damn things were when this machine was made. 1971, they had two-inch stunners on them. But zipper flippers, do you see that little hole? It's because the flippers can move. Yeah, that's right. They can move. So we'll see how all that works whenever we uh, work through it, too. I have another one here that I believe also has zipper flippers on it. This is... A Williams Student Prince. We've had this laying around all for a long time. And it also has zipper flippers. It's in much worse shape. What do you think? Now, how is that? How does a Williams have zipper flippers and a Bowie has zipper flippers? They must have called them different things. I must have that wrong. I might have to look into that. Zipper flippers. Well, which one have I got wrong? I'm pretty sure those are zipper flippers. Hmm. I don't know. I'll look it up here in a minute and let you know on the next part of the video. Um, okay, so like I said, the thing looks really clean, but you know what? We want, we want to look inside of it, don't we? Just to make sure. <laughs> so uh, let me take the glass off of it, and then we'll lift the play field and see what this sucker looks like on the underside. I didn't notice when we were looking it over, but this is one of the ones that has the canopy. So the glass is on a big frame <laughs> that folds up off the playfield. I always wondered why I went through so much trouble to do that. Before this game, they already had the glass that slid out. After this game, they had the glass that slid out. But for a little while, Bally made these machines with a canopy. We had a Dixieland one time that had it. Kind of interesting. Um, you can see the original color of the green, too. Wow. Wow. 
Um, so anyway, yeah, I looked up zipper flippers. Bally owns zipper flippers, so they called them flipper zippers, actually. So it, it's a zipper for the flippers. It, it, it zips up the hole between the flippers. <laughs> right? But players called them zipper flippers just because it kind of sounds better than flipper zipper. And then Williams ripped them off and called it closing flipper action. What the hell? Closing flipper action? Does it even say it on the thing? Did they even have the guts to try to say that on the machine? Closing flipper action. Whenever we do this one, we'll, we'll do the instruction card. I'll bet it says it on that. Closing flipper action on that one. But on this one, zipper flippers, baby. So uh, I'll take this canopy off. It just You can actually just uh, pull it right off the machine um, and lay it to the side. But for whatever reason, they made them where they fold up like that. Think of the money. I mean, I don't, <laughs> I don't know why they would do that. But whatever. So we'll pull that off and uh, then we can lift up the play field. I think you can lift it up how it is now, but we're going to be all in there, so I don't want the glass in the way. Okay, so this is from the era of big, heavy bottom boards. Look at that. Everything's very neatly arranged, but uh, there's a bunch of stuff in there. Let's count the relays, shall we? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. I think there's 15. I might have lost count already. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. I see 21 relays just in the bottom. Two stepper units and a score motor. Okay. But everything looks nice and clean. On stuff like this, so what is that? That's probably... We'll check to make sure, but that's probably the uh, coin counter. Completely unnecessary if you're putting it in your home. Um, looks like it's had some issues with the fuse, the fuses. One of them's been replaced, one of the fuse holders, and the other three don't look that great to me. We might have to mess with that, but we'll see. Um, knocker up here in the front. has a spring in it. That's weird. Uh, and, hmm, I don't see the bells or anything. Where are the bells or anything? Maybe in the back box? Or maybe it doesn't have some? Hmm. I don't see any place the chimes would plug in. We'll keep looking. But, uh, let me lean this farther back so that we can look at the bottom of the play field. Okay, so we've got six more relays here. It says red TB light, green TB light, blue TB light, red TB, green TB, blue TB. TB must mean thumper bumper. Thumper bumper. All right, so, uh, that's six more relays, and then we've got four here, a bird ramp, ramp red, ramp green, ramp blue. <laughs> okay, got an out hole kicker here. We've got a tar pit game as uh, gate assembly there. We have an advanced ball assembly there which looks very interesting. It has a long... I think there's something similar to that on um, Flight 2000 or something like that. A shooter alley gate relay assembly. So when the ball comes up, it goes out through a gate about right here and does like an eight across the playfield. And apparently there's a gate there that can 
open up and close. Um, ball release assembly. Slingshot. Other slingshot. Open gate relay. Flipper coil. Flipper coil. And then this is the zipper flipper assembly. Remember I pushed them in? Let's see how you release it. <laughs> oh, this was going to be a lot of fun. And then the out hole coil. So, what do we see? Do I see anything weird? Well, I see the ramp bird is burnt a little bit. That might be an issue. The ramp red burnt a little bit. That might be an issue. Um, but, like I was saying, I don't see anything hacked. Now, there is something going on here. These have been hacked. <laughs> so, we'll have to see what that is. That could just be them trying to fix something, though. I don't know. They took a wire loose from a switch and then soldered them together. Um, hmm. Don't you worry, people. We'll get to the bottom of that. Interesting. Looks like they probably added this. So maybe these were here and this wasn't. And these were here and this wasn't. And these were here. And this wasn't. And then it runs over to the wire loom. Goes up the wire loom. up to there. What are they doing? Why would they do that? So we'll have to figure that out. Hmm. Nothing strikes me as obvious. But we'll we'll figure it out. So there's that. A couple of them burnt. When you have something like this that doesn't necessarily mean anything's bad, but it could be a sign something's bad. So we'll keep an eye on that, and we're just going to work through it. So let me pull out the stuff that's in the bottom, and we'll see what all it comes with. And then we'll look in the back box. Okay, so inside it, box of 47 bulbs, number 47, uh, from antiquity. These probably are from the 70s. And then a whole bunch of 44 bulbs, which are basically the same thing, but a little brighter. Um, uh, brand new. Those are the modern packages. New shooter rod tip. New flipper shoes. New flipper shoe that isn't inked. The old shooter rod. It has a nice, pretty new one on it. Look at that. Feels right. Uh, and then a rubber ring kit for 4 million BC from Marco's Spec. We got a bunch of our stuff from there. They're in Columbia. Lexington, South Carolina, which is right by Columbia, South Carolina, which is about an hour from here. So if we order from them, we get the stuff pretty quick. The post office is taking forever lately, but when the post office is not taking forever, we get stuff pretty quick from Marco. So uh, this was bought in October, so he's been working on this recently. And then he contacted us. They're blowing me up on the phone, people, and you're just going to have to ignore all that. And then most importantly... It's got the schematics, or I assume these are the schematics. 
Yes. 4 million BC. If I can open them up with one hand. Oh, come on. Cooperate with me, piece of paper. Come on, now they're watching. We're live on YouTube. I should have done this at any time. Okay, there they are. Look quick, they might fold back up. Got them. 4 million BC. 906 is the number of the game. It's not their 906th game. It's, I don't know what number they started at, but each project had a different number. So that's a pretty good little scan of the schematics. That will be very helpful figuring out uh, what's going on. So, very cool. So it's got all the good stuff we need with it. Um, might have to order some coils and stuff depending on if we find any that are burnt up. But all in all, pretty cool. So let me slide it out from the wall and we will look at the, uh, we will look in the back box and see what's going on there. Okay, folks, we're in the back box. I found one of the bells. Now, why is there just one? I'm gonna have to look in the schematics before this very video is over to see if there's supposed to be more than one bell. You know me, I like lots of bells going off on my games. Uh, maybe we'll call a guy and say, hey man, one of your bells is missing. Ah, the mystery has been solved. That is a clacker. See it? It's a clacker, man, and there's nothing for it to clack. Let me go get a let me go get a flashlight. You see what I mean? There's a hole right there that a bell should hang down underneath here. And then every time this, which is uh 0 to 90 unit clicks and does its thing. The clacker clacks the bell. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Ron, isn't it a clapper? Uh, a clapper? No, it's not a clapper. It's a clacker. Don't tell me. Okay, now... We've had a little fire here. <laughs> it's minor, but it's there. I believe he, uh, I think we talked about that when he dropped it off. Uh, the coil's been replaced on that, so it's probably good. This one though here looks a little toasty too. Now, that, would, that was the 10 point, this is the 100 point. Now remember the 10 point is the problem that we're having. So that may be what's causing our issue. Also, the 10 point coil on the, uh, if I can get you in there. See how it's burnt too? See the paper? May still be fine or it may be burnt up. So it could be that the reason that the 10 points is pulling in is because literally the coil's just screwed up. So we've got issues here with our 10 point section, but look, we're also working on an issue with our 100 point section. It's starting to look dark too. So what, how does stuff like that happen? It's very easy for that to happen. Basically, a switch can stick on the playfield, so the, the, the rubber rings go around some stand-up switches. You can't see it real good, but there's an example. So when you hit that rubber ring, it connects those two little switches right there. You're looking right at it. If the rubber ring is too tight or the switch is misadjusted, then they're always connected. You turn it on, as soon as you do, you just scored 10 points because the switch is connected. But since the switch never disconnects, the 10 point relay is locked on and it stays on. And it can stay on so long that it literally catches on fire. So that may be what happened there, but we'll find it. We'll find it and we'll fix it and this sucker will live again. Um, but yeah, so that's that's definitely something's going on there. Now, the reason that this one is burnt is because it's the first player. 
if the game happened to be on the second player, it would do it on the second player too. Or the third player or the fourth player, but they all look fine. So it's a chicken and egg thing. All right, so we got to mess with that. So there's uh, the 0 to 90 unit here. Um, the player up unit there, which is what selects, you know, 1, 2, 3, 4. That's already been cleaned by somebody. The credit unit. And then what are they calling this one? The coin unit. All right. Now, keep in mind, this is a bally. So whenever we did the uh, flip-flop, same company, just a few years later. And then we did the Freedom, same company, just a few years later. And we've got this Knight Rider here. I don't know if it's going to come out before these videos come out or not, but the Knight Rider, same company, just a few years later. So a lot of this stuff works the same, but it might be in a different place. Like on the flip-flop and the uh, Freedom later on, they had a coin unit just like this, but it was down in the bottom. What are they calling the two in the bottom? Oh, the volcano motor unit, that's a, so that's a feature. One of the features of this game is when you play it, there is a little, there's a volcano that the ball lands in. Not a, this is old school people. It's a picture of a, it's a painting of a volcano on the play field, but then you land in a hole. Uh, but it makes lights start moving. And then whenever the ball kicks out, uh, whatever light is lit up, that's how much of a bonus you get. And then that must be the... Ball count unit. Okay. Okay, okay. Back to the back. So... Oh, there's a bell adjustment. It says bell adjustment. 100 points. 100 and 1,000 points. Or 1,000 points. Or off. Wouldn't that be horrible to turn it off? We'll probably have to get in touch with the customer and ask him if he wants us to turn it off or not. Okay, so uh, next thing, um, just while I'm in here, uh, we had a viewer, a frequent viewer, Mr. Dave, was asking, how do you take the back glass out? And I was trying to explain it to him, but on an E, it's different depending on the type of machine, but on an EM, typically they have a back door like this. When I drag this out, when we work on the back box, I'll drag it out here in the middle where we can have better light. Uh, but it has a metal back door with a lock on it, so the little... The little heathens at the pinball parlor can't get in the back, right? But I can get in the back because I'm the technician. Only the technician. So you take the back door off, and when you do, at the top of the machine, there are these little slides. And you can see the glass up there. See the black line that's on top of the glass? So these little slides are pushed in when the back door is on. If you... Um, if your back door's off, you can slide these back. And when you slide it back, it literally just stops being able to obstruct the glass. And then on the front, you can lift it up by this lift bar on the bottom of the glass. It's no big deal. They use the same setup in some of the really old arcade games too, Space Invaders uses the same setup, but it was made by um, uh, Midway, which no way, I don't think at the time Midway was making pinball machines because they hadn't bought Bally yet. But you get the point. Um, and then also uh, Donkey Kong has the same setup or a very similar one. Um, by Nintendo. So it's just a way that they've done that for a long time. So the the you can try to lift the glass out now, but whenever you lift it up, it'll hit those metal things and you can't get it out of the machine. So that's that. These are also the the light bulb sockets. These are not the greatest. These are the ones that were in the um, uh, flip-flop. And they had switched them out for a newer style on the um, freedom by the time we got to it. So as of 76, they were still using those. Okay, so that's what, that's what we got going on. Let me, uh, I'm going to look on the schematics about the bell. 
Okay, so there's the bell solenoid, which runs to that adjustment jack that we were looking at, which you can hook it up where it hits every time the 100 point relay or the 1000 point relay or both. So they've got it in the middle. Now the 10 point one is a little bit trickier because remember it's hanging on the bottom of the 0 to 90 unit which means there's not an actual solenoid that hits the bell. It's just every time the 0 to 90 unit step up solenoid fires it steps up the 0 to 90 unit and it hits the bell and so what makes the 0 to 90 unit step up solenoid fire? It's a switch on the 10 point relay. So effectively that coil is what's supposed to hit the the uh, a bell for the ten points. So it needs that it needs that bell hanging under there. But we'll get in touch with the well. We'll probably just order it. I'm sure he wants it. Why would he not want it? It's original. If he doesn't like it, he can take it back off with the screwdriver. It's like eight dollars. It's like eight dollars, people. Come on, it's it's eight dollars. Come on, people. Come on, people. Come on, people. I mean, people, come on. It's $8, people. Come on. All right, so I think that's what we're going to do. So we have to order some parts, but we're not going to do it yet. I'm going to wait until I get into it until we figure out what all, uh, what all else it needs. But that's a good little overview of it. You can, see, uh, you can see what direction we're heading, at least. So the first thing that we'll do is we'll take the play fit out and clean everything in the bottom with a vacuum, get all the loose stuff out, get all the goodies that he might want to keep, put them up here in the front where he had uh, his parts, right? Uh, and then we'll go through and we'll clean each relay in the bottom, and we'll clean each switch on the score motor. We'll clean the Jones plugs, okay? And then once we get that done, we'll go into the back box and we'll clean the Jones plugs here and we'll clean all of these switches in the back box and then once we get that done we'll clean all of these switches on the bottom of the play field make sure everything's good there right and then once we get that done then we'll try to play it and we'll write down what all's wrong with it well we'll have to do the play field top too so then after we do that <laughs> we'll, we'll clean everything on the top of the play field clean all the paint and re-wax it and all of that and put new rubber rings on everything get it all clean get all the light bulbs looking good and we'll take the back glass out and we'll replace all the light bulbs on that can't you just see it all happening people well you're about to if you stay stay subscribed to our channel we're gonna work through this sucker but you know what I'm gonna do right now I'm gonna lay this back down and I'm gonna plug it into the wall and see if anything catches on fire just so you'll see what we're starting with because uh, from what I understand, the thing already works. So it'd be good to have an idea of what the issue is uh, ahead of time. Now, we could just try to fix that one issue, but it, we'd run, he'd run into the same problem that he ran into last time. Long term, it's just not as reliable if somebody hasn't went through and touched everything. So we're going to touch every little thing in the machine and make sure that it looks good to us and it's nice and clean. Uh, so let me put everything back down how it goes, and then we'll plug it up and see if we get anything out of it. Okay, folks, so I plugged it in. Let's turn it on and see if anything locks on or anything. Okay, I turned it right back off. The blue pop bumper snapped just like that. Let me get something to write that down with so I don't forget which one. Glad I saw it. Okay, so I wrote down blue pop energizes immediately. This stuff we got to do pad. We had a <laughs> we had a viewer send us this. Of uh, this is his caricature of me working on pinball machines. How cool is that? See the little rat under the machine and there's my multimeter. That might be a sock laying over there. I don't know what that is. Look there's a, there's a gear. It's a sprocket. This looks like maybe a big diode or something. There's the plug. Look, I'm throwing out light bulbs. Got my screwdriver in my hand. I'm wearing very fashionable plaid. What do you think? I think he stole the artwork design from a fireball pinball machine. 
All right, so let's try to turn it back on and see if it does that again or if it, I don't know why it came on and then turned back off. It may have blew a fuse already. Okay, we'll try to turn it on again. Watch the pot bumper. I got nothing. <laughs> let's see what happens if I hit left flipper. Did you know that the left flipper is the uh, is the secret light button? Did you know that? Boy, it's a good looking game. Holy moly! All right, let's see if it'll start now. It, if it does, we're stuck on ten points, so it might reset that, or it might get stuck on again, or something. Hear that? So you can't leave that on like that. Something's and it kicked out two balls. Um, something's locking on, which may or may not be supposed to lock on. Um, so that's kind of where we're starting. So we got plenty to do on this one, right? With that, <laughs> it wasn't the the hold relay. I guess I could pop it up so we could see what what it is. It's, if I do that though, it's not, I'm not the balls aren't going to kick out right. We're just going to start working on cleaning it, people. So that's the best we'll uh, that's the best we'll get out of it. Basically, the thing's not playing right. It's giving us issues, and we went back to ten points somehow. I don't know. I wonder what, if we turn it on now, will it do the pop bumper thing again? Yep. How weird is that? That'll give you something to think about. So after you start a game and, and then turn it off, the next time you turn it on, the pop bumper pops, but just for a second. Hmm, very, very interesting, very, very interesting. That'll give us something to think about. But this is just our little introduction video to start the series. So leave your comments below, let us know what you think. Maybe make a guess at why it's doing that, if you can think of it. You can pop, probably go look at the schematics on ipdb.org, the internet pinball database.org, and uh, you can take a look at them yourself, see if you can figure out why it might do something like that, if you want to. But if not, just sit back and get a nice cold beverage, because I'm going to figure it out on these videos. But leave your comments below, let us know what you think. Make sure to give us a thumbs up for taking the trouble to film it for us. We'd like to thank everybody that's been subscribing to my brother, Donnie. If you don't know about that, that's my brother channel. Literally, my brother, Donnie, has his own channel. <laughs> and I'm over there with him on it a lot. We've been working on some old buildings lately. There's the volcano I was talking about. The volcano. We've been working on some old buildings lately, so if you like watching me mess with old pinball machines, you may like watching me mess with old buildings, too. But go check out Donnie's channel, my brother, Donnie. The link is down below. And if you get time, if you're going to buy something on Amazon, click our link down below before you buy it, and it gives us a tip. So we appreciate everybody that's been doing that. We also have on our website, lionsarcade.com. If you go to the top, you can go to our parts page. We've got uh, new merchandise, t-shirts, coffee mugs, stuff like that. So if you enjoy the channel, you might want to pick some of that up. So uh, check all that stuff out, and we will see you on the next video where we'll get into fixing this sucker. Hope you have a good evening.